Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining Wilkinson Church of Christ online and welcoming us into your homes this morning. Though things are a bit unconventional, we are still going to start this service off the same way we do all of our Sunday services, and that is with worship. There is no rule regarding whether you should sit, stand, fall to your knees, be quiet, or sing praises loudly during this next song. True worship is treasuring God above all things, and in essence, is a matter of the heart. So throughout this next song, let's keep our minds centered on Christ, because the most important thing is that we worship Him in truth and in our hearts.
Though we are unable to host services in our actual church building, we are so grateful that we do have the resources to be able to invite you to join us online for worship and teaching. We understand that having Sunday services digitally is not ideal, but we will continue to keep our eyes up and know that our God is so good and that He will see us through this. As disappointed as we may be in the things that we might miss out on in the coming weeks and months, we can trust in God's plan and trust in God's goodness and know that in all things, He works for the good of those who love Him. God has given us this rare gift to be able to slow down, to breathe, and to reconnect with loved ones and just be in His presence. Now is the time to show a hurting world that the church is not just a building that we go to on Sunday mornings. Friends, we are the church. We are the living and breathing body of Christ, and we will continue to be His hands and feet to those in need. We want to encourage you to stand firm and to get creative in living out our mission of changing lives through connecting people to God in these trying times. We do want to make sure that we keep everyone in the loop as can things continue to change. So we do have some announcements for you today. In case you haven't heard, our preacher Ryan will be hosting a Facebook Live session every Tuesday and Thursday at noon, and he's just going to be providing us with some words of encouragement as we continue to learn how to navigate the world that we live in today. If you're already on Facebook, all you have to do is follow Wilkinson Church of Christ and you can watch those sessions. We promise that we will teach Ryan how to properly end a live session before he continues to have a conversation with someone else in the room before this coming Tuesday. Also, our Ignite and Fusion teams have been working tirelessly to ensure that we are continuing our efforts in keeping all of the students as involved as possible. Fusion will be posting a digital service every Sunday evening on YouTube that all of the kids will have access to. And Ignite is currently putting together packets and mailing out to all of our elementary student families an action-packed Easter experience for all of you to do together. We understand that getting together as a small group is also a challenge right now, and we do hope that you're finding different ways to stay connected and continue in your journey with Jesus together. 
WCC is now offering an incredible resource called Right Now Media that offers several different ways for you to worship right in your homes. If you have any questions or have some issues getting registered, please reach out to Brandon Grubbs. One last thing, even though we are only offering online services right now, we are going to take this situation on a week by week basis and we will be releasing information as we have it. The absolute best way to stay up to date with everything that is going on is by checking our church website, which will be updated daily. Our preacher Ryan will now be leading us into this week's sermon as we continue in our In Like a Lamb, Out Like a Lion series. And I think that you'll find it's a bit unconventional in more ways than one. We will continue to keep our focus on Jesus' life as the ultimate example for us to become less so that God can become so much greater in our lives. We hope you enjoy today's sermon. So, while vision supported them with the water to support them, but because the village is so big, the water, the borehole is the other side of the village. So you find that the households that are this side, so the other water source has now provided clean water for use. The water is now safe, it is not like this. Okay, we just finished our water walk. We're coming down to get water. This is where they have to walk twice a day, 6 a.m. in the morning before school, and then once in the afternoon to get water. This is an unsecure water source uh, that they continue to use. Hey, good morning, WCC. Glad you're tuning in. Thanks for doing that. Um, sorry we can't meet together today. I'm um, going to try something a little bit different. So uh, just ask for some grace and patience as we're going to learn through this. But uh, we're thankful for the technology available to us that allows us to still um, stay in touch and communicate with you guys. So more of him, less of me. Remember, we'll make God greater. That's our theme this year uh, and everything that we do. And so today we're going to look at John chapter 1. So if you want to get your Bibles, go ahead and get those out and uh, be ready to go. Um, while you're getting those ready, just want to uh, follow up with a couple of quick announcements and then we'll pray and we'll get started. Um, first of all, you just watched a video on the Global 6K and uh, me in Uganda uh, on a water walk, which that was uh, a pretty amazing story for another time. Um, but uh, today is actually World Water Day. So it's a focused attention on trying to get clean water around the world to parts of it that don't have clean water. Um, so the Global 6K that we did last year, over a hundred of you did that. and. Um, we are gonna do it again this year. And some people have asked if we're still gonna be able to do it with all this going on. And the answer is yes, because um, it's not something that we have to do all together. We can do it on our own, at our own house, um, down if you live close to the park or Pinsy Trail or wherever, you can just do it on your own. So I want you to go ahead and, and register for that. Um, the link that showed at the end of that, that's where you go. It's our own homepage. Nick and Lydia Holiday are kind of organizing. So I just want to encourage you guys to do that today or this week. Be something to do and look forward to and definitely help out with the clean water crisis throughout the world. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoy this today. Uh, just trying some different stuff. Uh, 
but I hope you guys enjoy it. Know that we're praying for you. And again, remember Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday at noon, we'll be on Facebook live. If you can join us, we'd love to have you. Uh, we'll give you any updates, um, things that's going on at WCC and how all this is affecting us. So, um, let's go ahead and, uh, bow our heads and we'll pray and get started. Okay. Let me pull over here. I'm a man of faith, but I'm going to shut my eyes and pray. I want to stop. Lord, thank you for, uh, technology that lets us video and live stream Facebook live, YouTube, put it out to our people. And, uh, we're grateful for that. Um, Lord, we just ask you to move today even though we're that we're not together, but the fact that we'll all be watching together at the same time is awesome. So I just pray for our families that you'll bless them in their time of worship and communing with you. And then that you'll challenge us all through the power of your word today, as we continue to look to your son as a living example that walked the earth of how to become less and make you more uh, so that we become, you make you greater. So Lord, just bless this, bless our efforts, bless all of our people. God, and uh, just speak to us today and challenge us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water, so he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he rested on him. I didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water told me, The one who you see the Spirit descending and resting on, he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Looks good. So I want to talk a little bit about John the Baptist. He's the guy that we got our whole saying from this year about I got a decrease and he's got an increase. It comes from John. Of all people born of women, there's none like John the Baptist. So I kind of want to look at him for, for just a minute because I think sometimes we miss things because we're looking for certain things. And like I said earlier, but I think if we look for what God wants us to look for, we'll see it. And I think John saw something, but there's something about John. I mean, we read in all four of the gospel accounts that John was this guy out in the wilderness preaching, right? And all of the Judean countryside came out to hear John. And we're not sure if they came all out at once or if they came out at separate times, but we're talking about thousands of people heard John the Baptist. I mean, he was the Billy Graham of his day. No doubt about that. He was an amazing speaker. He was charismatic. He kind of looked interesting, which we'll look at here in just a second. But just going back through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we kind of get a little picture about John and who he was, right? So if we start back <clears throat> with Matthew's account, here was his message. It says, John said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but there's one who's coming after me who is more powerful than I am. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John says, I'm baptizing with water for the forgiveness of your, of your sins. But there's one coming after me who's going to even do greater things than that. John starts to tell the people and get this picture that if you think I'm good, if you think I'm great, you haven't seen anything yet. And if we look at Mark in the first chapter in verse 4, we read that John came baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John wore camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I am is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I'm baptizing you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then Luke's account says, now the people were waiting expectantly and all of them were questioning in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them, I baptize you with water, but there is one more powerful than I am coming and I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but his winnowing shovel is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff will burn with the fire that never goes out. So it's kind of interesting, right? When it gets this picture of John the Baptist and these crowds coming out and they're just amazed by how he's teaching. He's kind of a charismatic guy and he kind of looks pretty intimidating, right? He said he wore camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist and he ate bugs and wild honey. So it was kind of a, a rough, tight, tough, uh, gruff type of a guy. And one of the things that we kind of read in the Gospels is that people were coming up to John asking him if he was the Messiah or if he was Elijah. Well, there's a reason for that, why they asked him while he was Elijah. And if you go back to the book of 2 Kings in the Old Testament and go to the first chapter and we read at verse 5 and following, it says that the messengers returned to the king who asked them, why have you come back? And they replied, a man came to meet us and said, go back to the king who sent you and declare to him, this is what the Lord says. It is because there is no God in Israel that you're sending these men to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. Therefore, you will not get up from your sickbed and you will certainly die. That was the message to send back to the king. So when the men got back and they told him what he said, the king goes, what sort of man came up to meet you and spoke those words to you? And here was their description of Elijah. They replied, a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. It's Elijah the Tishabite, said the king. So we kind of get this picture if these Israelites grew up hearing stories about the great prophet Elijah and what he looked like and kind of his message that he spoke. And then they came out to the Jordan River to hear John preach. It's no wonder that they asked him, man, is this Elijah? Maybe this is Elijah come back. Because the Jews believed that Elijah would come back and proclaim that the Messiah was coming. He would prepare the way that Elijah would. So they would come back and ask John for sure if he was Elijah. But if you keep reading and studying, you'll see later on in the book of Matthew, in the 11th chapter, Jesus says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept, he is the Elijah who, who is to come. Let anyone who has ears listen. And then if you flip on ahead a couple of chapters in Matthew, to the 17th chapter, starting in verse 10, we read, So the disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said, Elijah is coming and will restore everything, he replied. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased to him, and in the same way the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. But well, we get kind of this, this image of John as this rough, tough dude that nobody probably wanted to mess with. Thousands of people were hearing his message and he was baptizing them in the Jordan River. And then he was kind of painting this picture about the Messiah to come after him. He said that the Messiah would be one that was even greater than him. He wasn't even worthy to bow down and take his sandals off. So I think if I'm in the crowd, I'm thinking, man, this Messiah coming is gonna be this something. I mean, he's gonna be a warrior king like we've never seen before. He's gonna be intimidating. He's gonna be one that nobody messes with. And when he comes on the scene, he's gonna restore Israel to its full power again. 
But it's interesting how John announced the Messiah when he first saw him. So John, in his gospel that we read, it's interesting how he announces the coming of the Messiah, right? It says the next day that John saw Jesus coming toward him and he said. Now, up until this point, I'm thinking if I'm in the crowd and John sees him, I would be expecting John to announce him by, you know, behold, here comes our coming king. Here comes our mighty warrior. Here comes King David to take back his throne. You know, some big announcement like and he would be coming with an entourage of, you know, mighty men like King David had that followed him. But here's the interesting thing, how how John the Baptist announced Jesus. John says he he used a term that was probably the most meek and mild term that could have been described as a man. And when he saw Jesus coming, he says, look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, if I'm in the crowd that day, this is what he's calling this great Messiah, this one who he's not worthy to untie his strap of his sandals. This big hairy guy, long beard, took the Nazarite vow. No bick, no booze, couldn't touch a dead body. No razor ever touched his head or his face. So he looked pretty intimidating. And here he says, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So... This whole series we've been talking about is in like a lamb, out like a lion. I think we get a glimpse of why Jesus said that there was no other man born of a woman like John the Baptist. Because John understood who Jesus was. And I think he understood of how Jesus had to come was not out like a lion from the shoot. He had to come in like a lamb, a sacrificial lamb. He knew what Jesus had to do, the sacrifice he had to make. He understood, I believe, about Jesus' whole thing was he was fully God, but he was fully man. But Jesus had to come in like a lamb. And that had to mean that Jesus had to be completely, humbly obedient, fully to the will of God. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, I miss things that God has for me because it's just not what I'm looking for. And I think there were probably people in that crowd that day that when he said, behold, the lamb of God, that's what they saw is is these lambs that were sacrificial lambs that were led to slaughter, that they're just, they're defenseless. I mean, they're not fighters. They have no defense mechanism whatsoever. They're the most meek and mild creatures on the earth. And Jesus came like that, not as a warrior king. And I think sometimes we miss that. We think in order for us to accomplish something great, do something great, then we've got to be great. And I think sometimes God says, you're missing it. You're missing it, Ryan. You're you're missing the whole point. I just want you to be fully obedient to what I want for you. And if you'll come in like a lamb, in your life, then I'll let you go out like a lion. And I think I miss that. And and I don't know about you, but maybe you miss that too. So you know that this whole coronavirus thing is things changing every day. And I know schools being canceled, getting extended. Vacations and spring breaks are being canceled or changed or, you know, maybe pushed back to a later date. I know it's been rough probably for a lot of families and, and um, with no sports and uh, no activities like that. So it's definitely different and a, a little bit of a change for us. But, you know, again, I started thinking about this and I, I thought, you know, what are we, well, what are we looking for? And, and maybe we're missing something because I, I know in ministry, it, you know, in, in my over 25 years of ministry, especially in the last decade, I know that what I hear a lot of families talk about is we just wish things would slow down. Just wish we could spend more time together. It seems like we're go, 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 and we're all busy, and we're just eating fast food, and we don't get it home sometimes until 9 or 10 o'clock at night from ball games, and then we go 
eat supper and then we rush to bed and doing homework late for kids and then it's get up and do it all over again and and um, so I thought you know what maybe coronavirus isn't a curse after all maybe it's a gift and uh, if we would look at it a little differently maybe we would see it as that so maybe we could take advantage of spending some time with our families hanging out eating supper at a dinner table, sitting down together and eating a meal. That's, that probably hasn't happened for a lot of us in a long time. Uh, maybe waking up and cooking breakfast like we did as kids growing up sometimes and sitting around and just talking about the day, playing some board games, maybe watching a movie together at home. So um, just wonder, what are we looking for? You know, because before things can become great, Maybe we got to come in like a lamb. So in John's gospel, he says, here's the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, but because he existed before me, I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and resting on him. Now, John doesn't mention the actual baptism. But when we go back to Matthew, to Mark's account, and to Luke's account, we actually get the full account of what happened once he saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us a little different account about what happens before John jumps in here. I want to talk about that just a minute because it's really of anybody in the world that had no business being baptized, no need to be baptized, it was Jesus. Because John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. It was a baptism for your sin. It wasn't a baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was a sin baptism. And so Jesus had no sin. He was the perfect, the Lamb of God, spotless, without sin. So he had no reason to be baptized except he was coming in like a lamb to be completely obedient to the Father's will. Okay, so when Jesus saw, I mean, this isn't the Jordan River, obviously, but I would imagine, you know, it wasn't much different than this. And there's a crowd of people all around, and he's preaching the uh, sermon about baptism and repentance, and they're asking him the question about if this is if he's the Messiah, and he's like, no, the one's coming. And then the day comes when. Here comes Jesus walking down the bank and he sees him off in a distance and John just stops dead center and says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And John's account doesn't give us this, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke does that Jesus comes right down to where John is, right? He had just said, this is the guy, the Lamb of God, but yet I'm not worthy to tie his shoes or take his shoes off. And here's Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, without sin, coming to John and says, I need you to baptize me. <clears throat> John argued with him, didn't want to baptize him. He's like, I should be baptized by you, but yet you're coming to me. I don't get this. And Jesus kind of says, you know, John, <clears throat> this is the right thing to do, to fulfill all righteousness. And Matthew's account says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him saying, I should be baptized by you, but yet you're coming to me? And Jesus answered, I want you to allow it for now because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. So John consented and baptized him. It says he came up out of the water and immediately the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. In John's account, in John chapter one that we were in earlier, John testified, he said, I saw it. I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it rested on him. And he said, I didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water told me, when you see the spirit descending and resting on him, he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And then it was the next day that John and his disciples were out there and it said that John was standing with two of his disciples when he saw Jesus passing by and he said, look, there he is, the Lamb of God. And I think it's kind of cool that Jesus, God. the one 
who let another human being, a sinful human being, take and dunk him under the water and bring him back out. What a beautiful example of submission. What a beautiful example of being completely obedient, being like a lamb. And I know one thing is with the Lord is you're never going to go out like a lion if you don't come in like a lamb first. And Jesus showed us the example of what it was like to become less, to make God greater, to be. And so if Jesus came and allowed John to baptize him, to fulfill all righteousness, to show us that that's an example for all of us, that we need to submit to the will of God. It starts with baptism. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit leads us in how to act, how to behave, how to treat people, how to love one another, how to live our lives, how to treat our families, how to spend our time, how to spend our money. So even when there's times like this and it's a struggle for people, whether um, this, this time has hit you really hard or whether it's not hit you that hard at all, the Holy Spirit that God gives us allows us to know exactly how to handle it if we seek Him. Helps us to deal with fear that we might have. Helps us to know when to pray. Helps us to when to put others first instead of ourselves. So I just want to challenge everybody to kind of take Jesus' example in this story about Him becoming the Lamb. And this was the Prince of Peace, the Lion of Judah, the King of Kings that the Bible talks about. And He came as a Lamb. And He did that for a reason. He did it to show us an example of how we're supposed to live this life. And then if we can do that, he will work through us. But it's when we put ourselves first and make him less, that's when things kind of get awry and get messed up. So just wanna challenge everybody. If the Holy Spirit, if we seek him, then we'll be able to know that somebody needs some prayer. Maybe they're not even in our area. Maybe it's somebody in a different part of the country. Maybe it's somebody in a different part of our state. Maybe it's some folks in the hospital that the Holy Spirit might prompt us to say, hey, take some time to give them a call and just encourage them or send them a text and let them know you're thinking of them. But no matter what, I think this time is a time that God can really teach us some things as long as we come in it as a lamb and not a lion. So I just wanna challenge you, Wilkinson, uh, let's follow Jesus' example and let's face this whole thing together as a lamb. Listen to the Holy Spirit and heed his advice. So let's all bow our heads and uh, let's close out today with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can call on you no matter uh, where we are, what we're going through. And one, first, we just wanna give you praise. We wanna give you praise, Lord, that, that because you're still on your throne and we know that. And we have confidence in that, we have faith in that. We have faith in the example through Jesus Christ and how he came and how he lived and walked on this earth, that it's for our own benefit. So help us to take heed to that. God, we know that your people have been in trying times before and been in struggles, um, both for themselves, but also just caught up in the things going on in the world. So it's not a new thing. And so Lord, we just seek you. We look to you for advice and wisdom we look to you for the attitude we should have. Uh, we look to you to help us overcome our own selfish desires, but to be able to put others first. And, and God, we just ask you to help us to take advantage of this time if we can. If we're not sick, that we can help others um, if we're able, um, but also just spending time with family and just to do what we can. And so Lord, we just look to you to help guide us through this. And Lord, to just look to you to show us um, how we should be, how we should live each day, and we'll take it one day at a time. God, and through our actions, may our lives bring you glory uh, as we try to become less and make you more. Uh, Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. But I hope you enjoyed it. Like anything new, there's gonna be some trial and error. There's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. I know for me, it was a lot different speaking to a camera and somebody on the other end of that camera versus 200, 300 people sitting out there in the audience talking to you. So I'll get better each week. We'll get better each week. Just be patient with us if this thing goes on long. But we're gonna do our best to keep some things up fresh 
and challenge it because we believe that this didn't surprise our Lord. He's got a plan for this and we're looking to Him and we're looking to become less so that we can make Him more. That's our whole goal this year. So if God's got a way to use this to help us to get that, to know His will, then we're gonna come out better for it. So just wonder what you're looking for. Maybe it made you think. I know it did me. God was always faithful and He was always there for His people that put their trust in Him and that sought Him with all their heart. So I know He will do the same for us. I hope we look at the life of Jesus, who was the one who came as the King, but He came as the Lamb of God first, became completely obedient, even to baptism, completely as a lamb, as a sacrificial lamb, and was willing to do whatever the Father asked Him to do. And because of that, God's gonna allow Him to go out like a lion. It's gonna end great. And I know this is gonna end great for us as well. Oh yeah, one more thing. Just remember in trying times, people are struggling in the days and weeks to come. And the church has always been a place where, the, where people come to for help. So we wanna be able to help and serve and support our community as much as we possibly can. So we appreciate your generous gifts to keep coming in, even though we're not joining in worship on Sunday morning as a group. But we appreciate you being such a generous church because it allows us to help people in the community that really need it. So thank you for being generous, Wilkinson. <clears throat> thank you for letting God use you in a mighty way. Thank you for becoming less, making him more. God bless you, love you. Friends, once again, we are just so glad that you were able to join us today, even though it was only online. We live in a unique time, unlike any other, and we have been given the perfect opportunity to stand up for Christ and to be a light in this dark world like never before. People are yearning for good news, so what better time to share the good news of Jesus? We live in scary times, but as followers of Christ, we don't have to be afraid. We can stand firm on His Word and know that no matter what happens here and now, we have an eternal promise through Jesus from our good and faithful Father. Spend time this week with the one who created you because He loves you beyond measure. Make the most of this time and have a wonderful week, Wilkinson.